Hi, this is Debbie at Color Color Everywhere, and today I want to show you how I make uh, binder pages for my small binders for storing small ephemera and digital prints to be used in paper art such as journals, cards, tags, and envelopes. I'm using the binders from the dollar store. They are uh, about 9 by 7. They come in different colors, I think yellow, green, blue. Um, they may have pink and red, but I, I haven't really gotten any of those. Um, eventually I'll probably cover them, but right now they're working just fine the way they are. The pages are going to be eight and a half by six inches. And they're made from uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. I use the, it's actually cardstock. It's a little bit heavier and it works really well. So I just take cardstock that I don't think I'm going to use for anything um, or that I have way too much of so that I can use it for something. And uh, the, the process is to cut the paper, the 12 by 12 paper, into um, 10 by 12. So you're cutting off two inches off of one side of the paper to leave you with a 10 by 12 sheet. Now don't discard the piece, the two inch piece that was cut off because it will be used um, for a pocket on the page. Now you will have to um, use some other paper to make the other pockets. Um, There'll be one pocket that is attached already to the page, but you will have to use um, other paper to make the other pockets. So score it on the 10 inch side where you've cut the paper off. You want to score another two inches, or I'm sorry, another inch and a half over. So it would be at eight and a half inches. Then turn your paper and on the 12 inch side, you're going to score at six inches, which would be the center of the paper. So you have the paper, it, it, looking at it this way, is 12 inches wide with a 6 inch score in the middle and a 1 and a half inch score at the bottom. Now here's the piece that was cut off and I'm going to go ahead and trim it down to use as a pocket. It was cut uh, 2 inches off so I, I need to trim it down to 1 and a half inches. And that little piece is really the only waste there is when doing it this way. I try to keep my pockets at about one and a half inches because that allows me to put more things on one page. Since the items are small, it, it allows them space to stick up a little enough to where I can get a hold of them easily. So you see the bottom pocket is actually two inches. That's where we had scored the two inches. So turn it so that the uh, middle crease is in the middle and then fold up on the bottom crease. So that's turned up a piece that's um, an, uh, an inch and a half deep to make a pocket. So then you fold it so that, fold it at the half mark so that the uh, two pieces are I'm sorry, so that the pockets are on the outside, as you can see right here. That will be the pocket on both sides. So you're actually making two sides of this page at once. And we're going to glue on the, on the cut side, on the open side, not the folded side. And then we're going to take the one and a half inch strips and glue them down so that there, there will be several pockets on each page. I didn't really worry about colors or um, what matched and what have you. I just used what I had that I didn't think I would use for something else. And this is just, like I said, regular cardstock. It's not the heavy, heavy cardstock. That gets a little too heavy.
If you don't have 12 by 12 cardstock, you can use 8.5 by 11. And instead of having a folded page like this, you would have a, have a one-sided, you would have a page that's not folded. You would just cut it out of your 8.5 by 11 paper, put the um, pockets on it, and um, then flip it on the other side and glue the pockets on that side instead of having a double page. I like it this way because it's strong. The holes punched are strong because it's double. And um, if I want, I can even make a pocket going on the inside. It holds the papers in fairly well. Once in a while, something will slip out. If I have really small items like you just saw with the paper clips, I'll paper clip them, them together and actually clip it onto the pocket. And that works really well too. But mostly just um, friction holds them in. If you turn the book upside down and shook it, I'm sure they would, you know, a lot would fall out, but we don't normally do that, so it's not a problem. So you take your um, strips, those are uh, one and a half by 12 inch strips, and you fold them in half. And this is to just, it's really just giving you a mark and making it easier. For folding after so that you'll know where to glue them on the page. And I usually glue them about a half an inch with a space about a half an inch between the top and the bottom of each pocket. That gives me room to be able to grab a hold of things easier and um, it just seems to, to work really well. You could make no space between the pockets if that's the way you want to do it and get more on the page. This could also be done using vinyl or uh, like a page protector by cutting the strips out of the page protector and sewing them on then you would be able to see through them but I don't really find find it that necessary to do that. It works fairly well like this. Now, as you can see, I just glued the edges, just the, the ends, I should say, of the bottom pocket. I didn't worry about gluing the middle part because it's just going to fold, so it's not really necessary. And then on the strips, I'm folding, I'm sorry, I'm gluing the ends and the bottom of the strip, but not the top. And you glue it in so that the glue is facing the bottom of the page. And I just eyeball it to um, get it on there fairly straight. Now you don't want to fold it immediately after it's been glued. You want to give it a, a second to, to um, start bonding to the paper. Because if you fold it at this point, the paper pockets will move and they won't go all the way to the end of the page and they'll kind of stick out in the, in the middle where it's been folded because as the paper folds it it moves the pocket so I um, don't fold it until I have all of my pieces glued on And I usually take my bone folder and, uh, you know, go along the edges and just try to make sure that nothing's really moved. You can see I'm pushing on that top one to make sure it's over all the way since it was the last one that was glued. And then I just crease the, the center line really good and um, use my bone folder to spread the glue inside so it makes sure it's good and attached. And I'm just using tacky glue. So now this is the inside of the page that you're not going to see because these page, these sides are going to be glued together. Now I did decide to leave it open at the top in case I want to put anything large in there I can use the inside of the page to, for storage. So I just glued it down the open side and the bottom and left the top open. It's not going to really affect anything. If it bothers me later, I can glue it shut. But it leaves a possibility to leave it open. Now 
This is a, a previous um, page that I made. It's made just a little bit different. But pretty close to the same. I have some other ones that have a pocket on the back, a big pocket on the back that um, you'll see in the other book. Now I'm I'm marking, I'm using an existing page that I've already marked for the holes. And what I'm going to actually do is instead of just punching that hole, I'm going to punch the holes that are marked and then move over just a tiny bit to make a little bit bigger hole because that way the page will turn a lot easier. If I just punch, because of the size of my hole punch, if I just punch one hole, the pages are, are difficult to turn. This way they, they turn easily just because they have a, a slightly, slightly more room around the ring and it allows it to turn easier. So it's a little bit of a pain to have to do that because I don't. If I had a bigger punch, um, it would be easy. I could just punch one hole, but I don't. So I'm using this one, and all I do is just slide it over a tiny bit, and it kind of makes an oval, little oval hole. You don't want to make the hole too huge because then the pages don't line up very well, which it's not a bad thing. It's just not as pleasing to look at. So now I'm putting my holes on the cut side of the page that we've glued together. The folded side is to the right, the cut side is to the left where I'm putting the holes. And I'm just going to mark those and then go with my uh, crop a dial and punch them out. You could punch them with a regular handheld puncher, it's just as easy but my hands aren't very strong so I find using the big punch is a lot easier on my hands. I have about I think about 16 books of these little binders that are sorted by categories according to what I use the most so I have one just for roses because I use a lot of roses and then I have one for flowers and then I have another one for fussy cut flowers which are just like the head of a flower that's fussy cut and um, then I have one for women because I have a lot of women digitals and then another book that's children and men and uh, labels, ta small tabs, birds, butterflies and insects just sorted like that And since I'm, I made these um, pages and got all the new binders, since then I have put labels on all of them with vinyl. And they're working really nice. I decided I'm not going to cover the books or anything like that. That It's really just a waste of time. It's a um, tool, so I'm not too worried about it being beautiful. I have them all on a little shelf, a little rolling shelf um, by where I work and uh, it is working very well for me as far as storage and access, easy access. Now if you wanted deeper pockets, for instance these Tim Holtz people, they could really use a deeper pocket because they have a tendency to slide around and and stick out. So if they had a deeper pocket they would probably stay in place later. Although you see the ones on the right, the men on the right, they're bigger and they have a deep pocket and they still slide around. But um, it works pretty well. So I went through and I uh, made covers for each book uh, not covers, I'm sorry, made pages for each book. Um, just as many pages I needed for the items I had right now to put in there. And um, I went along and I just cut pages and cut strips for, oh, like maybe three for each book. 
and I have not put them all together yet. I'll just do that as I go and I need more pages. Or if I get one day and I decide that's what I want to do, then I can go back and work on it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had a request to see how it's done. Thank you for the request. And um, it always helps when you're working on things to have a good storage system, be able to put your hands on things quickly and easily. And uh, it helps you to keep your space a little clearer. And it really works well for me. So thanks for visiting. Please come back soon and um, see some new videos as they come out. And don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks.